Hello everyone, welcome to Low-Code Bug and in continuation to integration sessions, let's understand web APIs today. So in previous video, we have seen how we can build an integration using a connected system. Now it's time to understand the web API because web API is quite interesting and it's opposite from the integration, right? So what in integration we are doing? In integration, we are getting some data, we are putting some data, we are manipulating some data, right? So we are the local system and we are interacting with external system. But in web API, what we are going to do, we will be going to create a URL for the external system so that they can interact with our system, right? So it's an opposite thing which we will be going to do inside web API. So why wait? Let's get started and let's create a web API object. So I'm clicking on this new object and we have this web API object here. So we have multiple options, right? So there are two options whenever we are going to create a web API. Either we can build everything by ourselves from scratch, the whole code, or we can use a few basic templates, which can be very useful, right, for you. Because whenever we try to understand web API, it's very important to understand what we can achieve with web API, right? So you can see, let's explore these templates. And uh, we have the basic templates where we have hello world, JSON, XML, we have some kind of document templates. We have CSV download. Okay, we have other options also. And this is my query option where we are having query record type and query data store entity, right? So what we will be going to do if I choose this option. So I'm letting some other external system to query the data inside my record type, right? So I'll give the URL to that person. And when that person will hit the URL, then he will be able to get the data from my APN database or from my API and record type, right? We have two options. Either uh, I'll send the data from record type or I can uh, send the data from data store entity, right? So these are the options which we can use while querying the data. So th the other person will query the data from my database, right? And this option is very like, it's very interesting because what the other person can do while hitting that URL, which I'll be providing to them, the person can start a process in my environment, right? So it's it's very good, right? Uh, because whenever we don't, we will just give them the, the person, the URL. And when the person will hit the URL, he will be able to start a process in my app and environment, right? So whatever he wants it to achieve, he can, right? And in response to that, I will uh, give him my HTTP response, right? So I will be preparing that response. And what function I need to use in this scenario? A bank start process, right? So we have already seen uh, how we can use a bank start process, a bank start process link. So by using this option, we need to use a bank start process and we need to configure the on success and on error, right? And the last is deleting a process model or sorry, process instances. We can also see that. So let's do one thing. Uh, let's let's create this one also right now. Create and start process. So let's choose this option and there are multiple uh, process model in my environment, but I'm not having a proper process model here for this testing. So let me choose one process model, which I have built for testing purpose, this one. And I will name this as a add user process model. Now I need to give some description. I'm not giving right now. This is for just for testing purpose. And now you can see the HTTP method here is post, right? Why it is a post? Because the person who is hitting that URL, which I will give to him, right? He will be changing some data in my database. He will be starting some process in my environment, right? So this is a post request made by that user. So this is my HTTP method is post. So endpoint, I can keep it blank also. It will generate an alphanumeric endpoint or let's put some endpoint, let's say add user new. So let's create this web API and let's see what options we will be getting. So right now, as I have already choose the template, so everything will be in place and they have already configured. You can see that everything is configured and we have this whole code generated by Appian itself. All right, so let's understand this code, what this code is. And as we have already discussed previously that whenever we go, we will be going to start a process from external system, we will be using this function called a bank start process, right? So let's see what this function is. And we have process model, we have process parameters, 
we have on success and on errors so now you guys can understand that this is the use of on success and on error right so now uh, you can see when i i'm using a bank http response so we have these functions whenever we are dealing with integration web apis so we have these functions called a bank http response a bank http response and when i type let's say when i try to type http bank then i'm having the request and i'm when i put dot here then i'm getting all these things which i can use i have the body form data headers path segment query parameters url and all these things right so right now you can see and we ha we have everything in place and let's try to do one thing let's try to test this particular details now you can see the test status the test result is again 200 means it's a success and the process is successfully started and what i will be returning to the external user is this detail right so how we can configure this body so now you can see in on success what i'm giving i'm giving a bank http response i'm giving the status code i'm giving the header and i'm giving the http header and in the body what i'm giving i'm giving a bank to json and i'm converting and i'm giving my whole process detail to the user sitting in the external system right so this is how we can build this process and if i don't want to let's say i don't want to give this whole details i only wanted to give the process variable details so what i can do i can use the dot notation again and i will use um, fb bank process info dot pv so what this pv is process variables this pm is process model details and this pp is process model properties right so all these body will be we are sending this by using a bank http response so let's test this again and let's see if i will be sending only body now and inside the body we will be having only the process variable details right so this is how we use the web api in, and it's very interesting we will do a lot of thing in upcoming videos just uh, wait for the videos and see you guys in next video that's all for today thank you bye bye